Hey, welcome to Maraxos Reviews and How-Tos. My name is Brian. Um, I've always heard that in order to get the best performance out of a video card, you have to install the most current drivers that are available from your GPU manufacturer. Recently, however, on another video of mine that you can check out up here, I've had people asking me what happens when you uninstall your drivers. Uh, some people have expressed a fear that if they uninstall their video drivers, then their video card will quit displaying stuff to their monitor, and then they'll be stuck on a black screen where they can then do nothing to fix it. Don't worry, that doesn't happen. Uh, you can uninstall your drivers and things will continue to display to your monitor normally because your computer will continue to recognize your graphics card as a display adapter and will use it to send a video signal to your monitor. Uh, not to mention, Windows has display drivers built into it as well. This question did get me thinking though. Uh, what would happen if I never installed the drivers? or? if I uninstalled my drivers and then didn't install any new ones. The thing I'm most curious to see, and since you're watching this, I'm guessing you're curious too, is what kind of performance will I get in games if I never install the drivers at all? Uh, so in a minute here, I'm going to uninstall my video card drivers and then play some games, uh, see what kind of frame rate and whatnot I'm getting, and uh, I mean, assuming the game will run at all, and then reinstall the drivers, do the same tests again, and then compare the results. So, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. If you're curious to know a little more about my testing methodology, just sit back and relax because that's what's coming up next. Uh, those of you that just want to get straight to the numbers, you can skip ahead in the video by expanding the video description and then clicking on the corresponding timestamp. For my tests, I'm going to use my $500 budget bill that you can check out in the cards right up at the top of the screen. It's rocking an AMD Ryzen 3 1200 CPU overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. It's got 8 gigabytes of G-Skill RIP JAWS 5 DDR4 memory at 2933 MHz. However, rather than the Radeon RX 560 that I had in my budget build video, I've swapped in a GTX 1060 3 gigabyte card. So I guess this is really a $600 build now rather than a $500 build, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what we're looking for here is what kind of difference in performance are we going to see in games between having the most current drivers installed as well as when we do not have them installed. In each game I tested, I either ran the game's built-in benchmark or repeated the same portion of a level in as similar a fashion as I could as having identical scenarios provides the most accurate comparison for this. For monitoring frame rates and frame times, I used MSI Afterburner and RevaTuner on all the games except for StarCraft II, which I had to use Fraps and Frafs for monitoring because the game actually wouldn't even launch when I had the, the drivers uninstalled if Afterburner and RevaTuner were running. I ran every game at their highest possible settings or at the highest settings I could still maintain over a 60 FPS average at. I did 10 benchmark passes per game, 5 with the drivers installed, and 5 without. I then threw out the highest and lowest results in each of the three metrics that matter the most to us as gamers, that being the overall average frame rate, the 1% and 0.1% lows. I then averaged the remaining three results together, and those are the numbers I'm presenting in this video now. The first game on our list is StarCraft II. With the drivers uninstalled, the game averaged 103 FPS with a 1% low frame rate of 66 FPS and a 0.1% low of 51.7 FPS. Now let's compare this to having the latest NVIDIA drivers installed, which at the time of making this video is version 390.77. Our average frame rate was actually only 2.7 FPS higher at 105.7 FPS and our 1% and 0.1% low wasn't much different either at 
67.3 FPS and 52.3 FPS, respectively. Now, StarCraft II is currently over seven years old, so it appears that the drivers built into Windows 10 are able to handle things in this game just fine. So, what do you say we see what happens with a more current, uh, possibly even a DirectX 12 title? Using Rise of the Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark without drivers, we averaged 83.9 FPS with a 1% low of 27.2 FPS and 0.1% low of 12.4. After reinstalling the drivers, we saw a little better performance on our average frame rate, uh, well, at least when you compare it to what we got in StarCraft II, but still nothing to get all that excited about. The average frame rate increased by just shy of 6 FPS to 89.8 FPS. Our 1% low saw a significant improvement of 62.5%, however, up to 44.2 frames per second. But our 1% low fell back down more or, more or less in line with the driverless run averaging 14.1 frames per second. With two games down, it's kind of looking like the drivers built into Windows 10 aren't that far off of NVIDIA's latest drivers, which does make some sense seeing as they are able to keep them somewhat updated via Windows Update and whatnot, but this video ain't over yet. We still got six more titles to test. Titanfall 2 without drivers hit an average frame rate of 72 FPS with a 1% low at 27.2 frames per second and a 0.1% low of 18.1. With the latest NVIDIA drivers, our average frame rate was not much different. Uh, we averaged 72.8 FPS, not even a full frame better. Our 1% and 0.1% lows, however, saw a significant boost jumping up to 49.4 and 28.7 FPS respectively. So far, all the games we've tested are all running either DirectX 11 or 12. So what about a different API like Vulkan? Without the most current drivers in Doom, we averaged 108.8 FPS with a 1% low of 39.3 and 0.1% low of 35.9. With the drivers installed, our average frame rate increased by 7 frames per second up to 115.5 FPS, which is a 6% increase. Nothing too crazy, but when it comes to the 1% and 0.1% lows, that's when things get much more exciting. They skyrocketed by over 100% each, up to 87.7 FPS and 72.9 FPS. Now, this is more the type of stuff I was expecting to see when I started making this video. Another game which runs using the Vulcan API, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, exhibited very similar results to Doom with the average frame rates at 86.1 FPS and 83.3 FPS. The 1% lows came in at 32.8 and 52.8 FPS with the 0.1% lows on a similar curve of 28.7 FPS and 50.9. Grand Theft Auto V followed right in the footsteps of Doom and Wolfenstein. The average frame rates were very close to each other with the 1% and 0.1% lows showing dramatically better rates. Playing Fortnite's Battle Royale mode, however, took us back to what we were seeing in our first few games where our average and 0.1% low frame rates were pretty similar. The 1% lows with the latest drivers installed being almost 20 FPS better is good to see though. The final game in our lineup is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Without drivers installed, I was averaging 89.6 FPS with a 1% low of 35.1 and 0.1% low of 10.3. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, how much better does PUBG perform with Nvidia's latest drivers installed? The average frame rate actually went down 3.5 FPS to 86.1.
And the 1% and 0.1% lows were disappointingly close to the previous tests, coming in at 36.3 FPS and 11.8. So yeah, this did not go at all like I was expecting it to go. I, I was fully expecting to see worse frame rates all across the board. But after running all these tests and going through the numbers and then taking some time to think about it, these results do make sense. Windows 10 is constantly being updated, including the drivers uh, which are built into it. Uh, in my mind, this explains why our frame rates are, well, why our average frame rates in every game was pretty much the same uh, with the most current drivers from Nvidia installed, as well as without them installed. The thing that running these tests did prove to me uh, is that in order to get the best possible performance out of your graphics card, you absolutely will want to update to the latest drivers from your GPU manufacturer. Uh, this was clearly evidenced by the improvements that we saw in the 1% and 0.1% lows. In the case of Doom and Wolfenstein, having the latest drivers installed made a huge difference taking us from some, you know, very slight stuttering to some of the silkiest smooth gameplay ever. If you have enjoyed this video, then please slap that like button before you go, share it with your friends, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos like this one. The comment section is always open for you to express your deepest thoughts and your greatest desires, or so you can say first or hi Brian thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video I hope that you have a great day and I look forward to hanging out with you again next time see you later man